In this tutorial, we're going to have a go at styling our universal filter plugin from Square websites. If you're just looking for a tutorial to get up and running, either as an introduction or as an installation guide, then I'd recommend checking out two of my previous videos, which cover those exact points. This time, we're going to take it a step further and show just how powerful this plugin is and why it's worth every single dollar from the price tag. This makes your Squarespace website shop, blog, or calendar section so much more powerful. So let's go into the shop section once more and click on the cog. And here's a plugin that I've set up and installed prior to this. We've got some categories that I've set within the shop products that allow us to filter to get some of the more useful aspects of this tool available. But also we've got whether it's available or sold out and we've got the sort order as well. So we can sort from A to Z, Z to A, etc. So now closing all of them, we've also got a search built in, which isn't available as standard within Squarespace. We have to add a search block at the top section here, and it's not quite so fluid or flexible to work with. Those are just the basics and we've already covered them. This time we're going to go into the cog for settings and we're going to go into advanced and back into our page header code injection section. Here we've got the code that we had in before. For some reason, it's not always loading it. So as you see, I can't scroll down from the stage. This has happened a couple of times for me and it's just taken a few seconds. It could be my internet connections just playing up just to get it so we can actually scroll down through the lot. And I think maybe I've cracked it and I just need to sometimes scroll away from this section and actually put the cursor off to the right of it to allow us to scroll the full height. Anyway, if that's an issue for you, just wait a few seconds and it should just click into place. What I'm going to do first is actually select all, Command A on a Mac, and then Command C to copy. Swap out Command with Control if you're using PC. And I'm going to bring up a notepad, just paste it in a blank notepad area. So I've got all of the original code. It means I don't have to go and reinstall the plugin if I make a mistake with this text. You might be fearful about changing any of the settings in this Chrome extension, but I would say take a backup like I've just done and have a play with it because you can really see how it comes into its own. But let's start by going through some of these settings. We're not going to go through them all in this tutorial, although I do aim to create mini guides for just about every setting available with this plugin. And we're going to start off by the positioning. So by default, if we look, it's along the top. It's aligned to the center. So we've got equidistant spacing to the left and to the right. And if I go full screen, it might give us a better example of that. All in all, that seems to be working quite nicely. Let's say we've got this issue where we want at least five different columns and we want it to work perfectly on different screen sizes. So let's go back to our cog section, back into advanced and the code injection, and we're going to move the position from top to left. Always check out the comments. They start with two forward slashes and then we can see the text is grayed out. That means it's a comment and it's to help you get up and running with this tool and the website knows we completely ignore it. The bits it doesn't ignore would be this position option. And if we look at the comment, we can see that it gives us the different positions that we can apply it. Let's go with left. So we're going to bring that filter option to the left hand side of our product listing. And we're also going to align it to the left. We'll go right to the way to the edge of the content area on our Squarespace site. Show item count that basically is a true or false setting. And I'll just put true just so we can see what it is. With each filter that we've selected and filtered out others, it will show how many are selected. This setting here is one that I'd strongly recommend you don't change because it allows it to work on both Squarespace 7 and 7.1 by the looks of it. A more advanced setting and I would just leave it in place. I'm not sure what the difference is between the show items count and the item count. So we're actually going to put this one as false. Back to what it was, we're going to try this one instead. There we go. I'm going to put filtered products. I think that will put it as the headline to introduce that section. Next up, we've got the option to keep the drop downs open when we first load the page so that they're already expanded. So let's go for true on that one. And we've got our first custom class. This is a more advanced option and it's something I'll be covering in a future tutorial, but I don't want to get too heavy into this right now. This means that we can target this light drop downs class and apply custom styles. And if you already know what I mean by that, 
then go in and have a play around with it. But if you are new to CSS, I strongly recommend leaving it for now. We then move on to the sticky positioning of it. Now we've got off to the left. What we can actually do is set this to true, meaning that the filter item should scroll down the page with us as we've got more products in our catalog that becomes a nice effect. And there's one more setting if I can find it. It's the view setting here. And we're going to change this to buttons. And we can see again, all of the options we've got available to change this to. So let's change this to just buttons. Okay. Press save and bear in mind, we've got our backup in place. And let's go into preview mode and see what we've done. We've got our filters now as individual buttons. If we click on them individually, we can toggle them on or off. So again, it picks up the colors from the site. And when it's in black, it means it's selected. Really nice, simple filter options. I don't think much else is needed with that. But when we start scrolling down, we can see that that sticks to the left-hand side. So when we use a left-handed filter option, we can now see how good that looks. Really helpful for the viewer. This means that they can navigate through the website with ease, as opposed to the previous option where they'd have to go back up to the top, then click on back to all, and then select another category from there. The default Squarespace option is absolutely fine if you're starting off with a next to zero budget or you only have a handful of products. But as you start building your shop catalog or your blog section, I will be creating a future tutorial showing how we're going to implement this into our blog for Pixel A's Academy. And it's going to make a big difference, in my opinion, to how people will navigate through our blog posts, hopefully increasing retention. But with an online store, it's all about cross-selling and upselling. We want our viewers to be able to jump from product to product easily, add them to the cart, and then jump onto the next one. For every 10 viewers on our site, if we can just get them to make one more sale because the website makes it so much easier for them to do it, that's our job as web designers for e-commerce sites. Hope you found this helpful. Just a quick reminder, I've got a $15 a month school community where we have a dedicated section for Square website plugins. And I'm going to be building out a load of tutorials in that section, all collated, neatly organized together as a mini course for this exact filter. We're going to be showing examples of how it works on different looking websites, how we can adapt it from an online store to a blog and even advanced map listings. And what's more, myself and my team at Pixel Hayes Academy are on hand to help you get the most from these plugins as well. You can leave us a message, you can come back with ideas and we can pass on those ideas to the Square Websites team. We've left some information in the description. I'd also recommend subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the latest developments and new plugins and features that will be coming available regularly. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.